Hey everybody, thank you so so much for tuning in. Today's video is part three of my nautical wedding series and today I'm making a centerpiece, table numbers, and a Mr. and Mrs. decor piece. If you haven't already, check out part one and two. Part one, I made a nautical seating chart which can be totally customized to any theme. And part two, I made a welcome sign which is also customizable as well. And they're both using Dollar Tree materials. So I really hope that you enjoy this video and stick around by subscribing to this channel because once you hit that subscribe button, we instantly become best friends. Did we just become best friends? Yep. And please click that notification bell. Make sure that it's set to all so you know every time I post a video, and if you like these ideas, please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to start with my table numbers and for this I used the wood cutouts from Dollar Tree. They come in a pack of six so they bring two of each and each pack brings different ones. So now I'm going to use some tumbling tower games from Dollar Tree and I'm going to grab my little wood cutouts and I'm basically going to make a stand for it. You can use wood glue, but I wanted to use hot glue because I wanted this to hold instantly. Sorry for my glue gun looking a hot mess. Every time I work with floral, it gets all sorts of funky. So I'm gonna press my piece in, and once it's dry, I'm gonna stand it up and make sure that my other piece is nice and leveled. Now there is gonna be a little gap on the side, but this is totally fine. So I'm gonna add another strip of glue and go ahead and press that in. I'm gonna go ahead and do this to all of my wood cutouts. Now you can go ahead and do just one type of wood cutout. You can do a variety, but some of them are a little thin. So if you are planning on using a stencil to write the table number, then you might wanna do it beforehand, or you might wanna make custom ones on a Cricut because the ones from Dollar Tree are a little bit too big for some of these cutouts. Like this one right here is really, really short. So most of the stencils that they sell at Dollar Tree are a little too long. So what I ended up doing was I ended up staining the whole thing. Now I always use dark walnut. I've had this forever since my first tutorial. I'm gonna stain this, but of course you can paint it. And I am using a Dollar Tree sponge brush, but you can do this with a rag. I just really like using these sponge brushes for this. There is some writing in the back, so you can go ahead and lightly sand that, or if you're using a dark enough color, you actually can't see it once you go ahead and stain the entire thing. But like I said, you can paint it whatever color you want. I just really like that this matched my lantern. So I let it dry really, really well, and then with the color turquoise, I just wrote some numbers in, and then I added a little seashell at the bottom to give it a nice little accent. This was so easy and so affordable and you have these cute little table numbers. For my centerpiece, I'm going to take it old school and pull out the lantern that I made. I believe last year I made two sizes, a large one and a smaller one with the little handle. These are made with Jenga pieces and I'll leave the link below. So for this, I am going to use this larger one. Now, these are super duper sturdy. I'm also going to be using the same greenery that I've used. This is the same stem. I still have leftover. So I had enough to make my table chart, my welcome sign. I have been using this for everything. And now this. So look how many uses I got out of just one branch. Originally it was 15 bucks. It rang up for six because these are spring greenery, which are on clearance right now. But I think it was really, really worth it and does look a little better than the Dollar Tree greenery. You can also use Walmart's 97 cent greenery. Now I'm just going to cut off any pieces that look kind of funky and I'm going to start to wrap it around. You can go ahead and use a floral wire to attach it. I'm going to use hot glue because I actually want this to be really tight up against the lantern. If you want it more rounded off, you can also do that. But I kind of figured that if I wanted it rounder, then I probably should have just bought a cheap wreath and placed it around like I did the first time that I made the lantern. And if you haven't seen that video, like I said, I'll link it below. Super duper cheap, all made with Dollar Tree materials. So when I get the fit that I want, as you can see, I still have greenery left over, which I didn't expect. Now you can add whatever you want to the center, but I grabbed this Dollar Tree candle holder and I actually broke this. I put it in my bag without wrapping it and there's chips everywhere and I thought this was a perfect way to use it. So I went ahead and spray painted it using this beautiful color. You can still see that it's chipped, but because this is a nautical centerpiece, I decided that I would go ahead and cover this up. 
So initially, I grabbed one of my candles. This is a remote control candle. And I kind of did this whole thing where I wrapped it around with twine and I added one of the little Dollar Tree starfish. When I put it all together, I wasn't really feeling the fact that the candle was a cream color. But at this point, I did go ahead and grab some seashells from Dollar Tree and I started to glue them around the side. Now I did this with a candle on there so that I don't go ahead and push the seashells too forward or too back and then my candle can't fit. And then in the front, where you can really tell that this is broken, I added some extra seashells to that. So I went ahead and repurposed my broken candle holder and I think this looks really cute, but the candle was still really bothering me. So I did go ahead and try it out and put it in the lantern to make sure that I liked it. And even when I put it back in, I really didn't. You can also go ahead and add a little vase. I didn't show it here, but I did add a vase with flowers. And then I just figured that a white Dollar Tree candle would do the trick. Now I did add a little starfish to this. This is a salt dough starfish that I made for my baby shower years ago using Dollar Tree dough. If you wanna see a video on that, leave me a comment below. I will definitely do a video. This is super duper easy and makes this really, really cheap because it looks really nice. So once I was done, I added a little bit of this netting which I had left over from my baby shower and I used it in my boat DIY. I went ahead and secured it using some hot glue. I added very, very little because I didn't want it to be overpowering. Just give it a little bit of pizzazz. And when I was done, I thought I had a really cool centerpiece. But wait, we're not done yet. We're gonna make a Mr. and Mrs. sign and I'm gonna use these letters from Dollar Tree. I know it's not supposed to be all caps, but this is what's at Dollar Tree. You can always go to Michael's and get the appropriate letters, but this is what I had. So I pa spray painted it using that same turquoise spray paint. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. These letters are impossible to spray paint it runs i've tried sanding them a little bit you're better off just taking some chalk paint and painting them but i haven't painted them in so long that i forgot and immediately regretted it as you can see the paint is just sliding off but that's okay because you're really not going to see the colors as you can see here it's bumpy and lumpy but you learn from my mistakes so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab my e6000 and my handy dandy color key. I'll leave the link for that in the description. I always get questions on this. It just makes using E6000 and anything in a tube a lot easier. So when I open it, you're gonna start to see the E6000 come out and it usually tends to squirt out for a long time. Now I'm gonna use these Dollar Tree seashells, but if you cannot find this, AC Moore has a pack of shells for $1.99 and you can definitely use a coupon to make it cheaper it ends up being the same thing and you might get a little bit more shells. So I'm gonna spread my glue and then I'm gonna grab a little paintbrush that I do not care about and spread it. Whenever I'm not using my E6000, I'm gonna make sure to place it on a part of any letter that doesn't have glue on it so that I don't waste it and it's not just falling on my table. Initially, I just started to drop my seashells on there and push them into place and this was really, really easy, except for the fact that it was getting stuck in the middle. And then as I worked my way down, I just started doing it with my hands. I also have a little crystal picker, which I didn't show myself using for some reason, but I use it for jewels and sequins and all type of things. I'll link that below as well. You've probably seen me use it if you've been on the channel long enough. So I did continue to kind of like pour and then move around until I covered the whole thing. Now at first I was questioning how this looked because it did look a little out of place. Some shells were sticking out and this is when I stopped pouring them on and started placing them on with my hands so that I can control where the shells were sticking out from. So I just kept going and doing my thing. Make sure you're watching some Netflix, you've got some wine, whatever you like to do, because this does take a little bit of time. So even though I'm finished with the S, notice how I'm gonna go ahead and take my E6000 and place it onto the R so that I'm not wasting that precious glue. And once I am done, I have these really cool letters. I did get this and sign from Dollar Tree. 
Now they also have an at sign. I didn't paint it, I really liked the original color. And when you touch the seashells, there's absolutely nothing lifting or coming up, which is why I don't use hot glue for this. The E6000 definitely makes a difference. It's not budging. So when I was done, I had this really, really cool piece. It's really unique, as well as everything else on this table. So I really, really hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below if you'll be recreating any of these, which one is your favorite. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. As usual, thank you so, so much for watching, and I will see you on the next one.